What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Certified G's. We're out here in Vegas at the M Hotel and Resort with the big homie, Nate Pierre-Louis. Nate, appreciate you coming on, bro. Uh, No problem. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. And Nate's been the homie for a while. So, you know, this is even before he was in the G League. I was making mixes for Nate because when you were at Temple, it was, I think your last year at Temple, you had hit me up on my G League page and said, I'm trying to play in the G League. Can you showcase me in some way, right? And I think I made a a mixtape for you and I said something like, he's the Russell Westbrook of the NCAA. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to hype you the hell up. You know what I mean? But that was like the first mixtape I ever made of you and that was before you were in the G, you know? So this is a, yes sir, this is a long time coming. And uh, you know, Nate, let's just start off, man. You know, you're from New Jersey. What was your childhood like growing up? Uh, childhood was good. You know, I had, um, growing up, I had two little brothers. Um, my mom and dad um, went to school in Irvington, New Jersey. Uh, it was fun. I had a great time. Well, your dad was a professional basketball player. Yeah, I actually yeah. went to school in Italy. That was my very ah, first. okay. Yeah, that was my very first time going to school in Italy. My dad played pro for 10 years. Um, then he came back home, became a dad. And full time dad. I'm not gonna say dad, but full time dad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Full time dad. Enjoyed himself, and you know, we had a really good time, a good childhood, and he taught me everything I know about the game. So I did see online that you were the eighth ranked seventh grader in the nation at one point. <laughs> I talk about that because you know I think wow, it's way Jeff. too early <laughs> wow. to be grading kids, to be ranking them, to be ranked number eight in seventh grade. I think it's cool as hell, yeah. right? But I just feel like it's too early. Wow, that's crazy. I haven't been, no one's ever act told me about that. Like I didn't even think people knew about that. <laughs> how did you even find yeah, that? Yeah, how did you even I, find yeah, that? I mean, I just Googling. <laughs> yeah, so like I always remember, um, I got the very first ranking ever. I was like number three in the country in sixth grade. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Uh, then ninth grade, I was like number twenty in the country, eighth like twenty one in the country. Then um, one summer, my dad said, "You know, we're going to just like I'm not going to say take back and go like get out the camps, but mm-hmm. I'm glad that he did that because me as a person, you see the person that you know and in love and great person, level headed." Down to earth, I don't think I would be that person okay. because uh, I was. I mean, I'm still confident, but I really feel like I was untouchable. <laughs> I, but you're like 11, 12 years old. I was. I started. God, I got my first rank, and I was 12. Wow. Sixth grade. Uh-huh. I woke up one day, and my dad comes in the room, like, "Look at this," and I'm like, "What?" He's like, "You're the number three sixth grader in the country." That's insane. And I said, "What?" <laughs> At that age, you just think you're you're Bro, him, Mike. I, Bro, it was so bad <laughs> in sixth, seventh grade. People used to come up to me like, "You nice in basketball?" Like, I'm the number eight player in the country. What you think? That's insane. But it shouldn't be like that. And I do agree, though. Like, you shouldn't be ranking these kids this young. You know, I think that you know, it's a lot of time to still develop. You know, I'll still find a way to get in the G League. Still find a way to get in the league in a certain way. But I think grading these young kids kind of takes the joy away. Yeah. You know, um, I always remember I stare like a lot of NBA players. Now, in my class, I was ranked above in middle school. You know, I've seen, like, guys that you guys see who are all-stars. And I'm like, I know you guys because I know everybody because I was that guy. Um, but, you know, I played against everybody. So I was doing a little research, and at uh, Roselle Catholic, you played with Nazi Reed. Yeah, that team was crazy. Yeah, I was doing research. That school had Isaiah Briscoe went there, yeah. Yeah. Khalil Whitney. I mean, Jay Witt, yeah. there's like, so many guys. Like, what was Shout it like playing with those guys? It was, at the at the time, it's just like you don't notice. Like, you know, we're just kids. You know, it's like another name that you didn't really mention. Um, this is a guy named Andre Rafis, too. <laughs> and, okay, that is the name that I wanted to talk about, but keep going. You know Dre? I know Dre. <laughs> Shout out to him. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> wow. So Dre Rafis is one of like, another guy that I came in with um, my junior year, uh, Leandre Washington, Jelly yep. Fam. Yep. Um, it was at the moment you don't realize how crazy it was, but when you're just like walking the halls, this is like normal. Mm-hmm. But you know, looking back at it, it was fun. It was really a great time. What was Nas like in high school? Nazi in high school. It's funny dude. Like that's like he's goofy. He's like one of my 
one of my good friends growing up. You know, basketball wise, dominant. Right. <laughs> like, right. dog, what? Dude is a 6'10 point guard. <laughs> like, and he was part of the Jelly Fam at that time. Big Jelly. Yeah. Yeah. Big oh, yeah, jelly. for That's sure. Big Jelly. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Nazi is like insane. Like, you see what he's doing now, right now, which is amazing. Like, he's worth the money. Like, he's actually worth, I think he's worth more. But, you know, Nazi's Nazi. You know him. He's talented. He's, you know, he's a unicorn. You know, the same in and out he's hitting everybody else with now. He's been doing that since high school and dunking on everybody. So it's crazy. And then after high school, you end up committing to Temple. Yes. Why Why was Temple the one for you? I love Temple. I love Temple University. I love Philadelphia. Loved Aaron McKee. Love Fran Dumphy. The location was perfect. Um, my family got to see my games every but like two three days every like it was two two games a week so if it was home games sometimes back to back two two games a week um it was perfect i love temple uh this playing style and if you guys know my playing style you know it's really rugged you know it's philadelphia blue collar not hand nothing hand given to you you know so i think it was like an identity that t is instilled in me you know i love t for temple you, you know, i love it I want to go on that a little bit before we go back to Temple List. Nate, describe your play style because I feel like for the ones that are watching that probably maybe not have seen you played yet. Yes. Describe your play style because you are the ultimate junkyard dog. Yes. You know what I mean? The ultimate like just grit and grind type of dude. Pick yeah. you up 94 feet. Describe that a little bit. All right. Uh, can I say this here? Uh, I think that I'm the best defender in the world. You can't take that from me mentally. You can't take that from me spiritually. That's my identity. I think I'm the best defender on this planet. Uh, I guard 94 feet. Um, I try to control the controllables, my effort, my attitude. Uh, I'm downhill. I'm a guy that you will want on your team. But I think my playing style is, you know, defense. You know, I, 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 that's all I, I'm, I'm, I, I study it. I I embrace it because that's the one thing you could bring to the game every single game. Mm -hmm. You can't control how many shots you get because, you know, we're in the G League. So the NBA is looking for role players, great attitude guys, and a person that they'd be okay with being the 14th or 15th man on the roster. So I would say, like, I'm that guy that's the perfect locker room guy. But when I'm on that court, 94 feet. You're gonna feel me. I wreak havoc mm -hmm. on the basketball court. Um, I don't get. I'm, I take pride in not getting screened. Like you know, certain things that a lot of people don't take pride in. I take pride in. Okay. Like I feel as it's really a, an art to not get screened. You know, it's that's, it's like as a corner if they don't throw it to you. Wow, they don't throw it your way. Yeah. Yes. You know, because I feel as like this is this is me being me. I just think that basketball should be more like football. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Stat wise, like some people look at this, look at the box score, and they look for like steals, blocks, you know, points, rebounds, right? I think that for me, like it should be like football stats. Like how many deflections did he have? Okay, you okay. know, like how many stops did he get? Like corners do or safeties. Yeah, you know, I look, I think about myself now, like as a as a a corner or a safety, and mostly a corner, because it's like a lot of the stuff that I do you guys won't see on the stat sheet. Gotcha. And I feel as, for my playing style, I feel as I could morph into anything. You could put me with the best players in the world. You could mm -hmm. put me with the worst players in the world. I'm still going to be the same person. Offense is all situational. And if you're on a bad team, they need you to score. Now you could average 30 points. Right. You could average 25 points. If you're on a great team, you may have three points, four points. Like, look at Jerry Vanderbilt. Who are the players that you study could you say you study defense yeah. who was it the guys that you try to study avery bradley Ooh. but it's a it's a different avery bradley i look i like 2016 avery bradley okay number zero celtics, celtics. <laughs> that ab you know uh houston rockets pat bev ah i like that i like that um crusoe mm. gp2 um those are the guys. No, I love AB, though, because AB is the one that taught me how to get over screens. 
when I was my rookie year, he helped me a lot because I went up to him and asked him how did I get screened. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, wow. okay. And he, oh, yeah, that's right. He was playing with the Lakers, the Lakers at the time. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. So Avery Bradley is one of my favorite players to look at because I feel like we're like the same similar built, same size, you know, and our roles is pretty much like the same in the NBA would be. I mean, AB played it for years. Now I'm kind of like trying to, I'm really trying to get there and I will get there. Nate, you had mentioned him a couple of times, Aaron McKee. Yeah. So he was your assistant coach up until your last season. Yeah. He became the head coach. Yeah. I feel like Aaron McKee's legacy as an NBA player doesn't get remembered that much. He did win six man of the year. He yep. played 14 years in the NBA. Yep. He was on that um, Sixers team that, that made, made the, the finals, finals with Iverson. Like, yep. what did you learn from him? How to become a pro. Aaron McKee taught me how to control the controllables and be a professional. You know what I'm saying? So he taught me all the little things, you know, how to, you know, control the controllables, how to make sure, you know, rebound the basketball. You know, he taught me to help. He helped me to become a role player. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, it's not like nothing wrong being a role player because that's what makes you money. Every right. team needs it. Every, every team, team needs it, yeah. So he was teaching me how to become a professional. And again, I mentioned it earlier, when you're in this storm, you don't understand what's going on. But when you take a step back and realize what you learned, it's a gem. So I really think that Aaron McKee is a big part of how I am and who I am right now. And I really want to thank him because I don't think he really understands how much of an impact he helped me with. I think that's cool that you mentioned he taught you how to be a role player just because he was a fantastic role player. Bro, he won six man of the year. Six man of the year, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> to be an award winner in the NBA, you just have, no matter what the award For is, real. you have to be elite. You, you have to be I mean? elite at something. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's the thing about you, Nate, is that you are elite at your role. Yes. You know what I mean? And understanding your role and knowing, hey, you might have two points, five points, ten points, whatever the case is, but... You do so many things that you said don't show up in the box score. Yes. And I think a lot of NBA teams, a lot of teams just anywhere in the world would really appreciate. You know what I mean? So, Thank you. That means a lot, Jeff. Thank for you. sure. Thank for you. sure. All right, guys. We're going to throw it to a short commercial break, and we'll be right back to Certified G's after this. So fast forwarding a little bit, you graduate from Temple. You take a year off. Now, it might not have been a year off, but... <sighs> There was a gap year between you yeah, me being and at my Temple pro and yeah, going yeah. to South Bay. What happened that year? G League. Where's the G League? The G League didn't, didn't even know they was having a G League season. Remember that. Right. right. So now I'm like, all right, what's the vibes? No calls. No calls. No calls. Again, I'm just working out, waiting for calls, waiting for calls, waiting for calls. Long story short, the first G League draft comes. Don't get drafted. I'm like, all right, what's the deal? What's going on? So that was the year that the G League went to the bubble. They cut the teams and they cut the roster spots. So it was, instead of 20-something teams, it was 15 teams in the bubble. 16 teams or 15 teams in the bubble in Vegas. It was on Orlando. Or Orlando. Orlando, yeah. In Orlando. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the showcase. Yeah. Orlando. Don't get called. So I'm like, yo, bro, I don't have a job. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I was going to go to one of the teams. I'm not going to name the teams. Now we're in, I'm going to say June. Summer League. What's going on? First Summer League. I'm like, what's going on? Like, am I going to go to Summer League? No Summer League. Still waiting, still waiting, still waiting. Now we're like, Yo, what's going on? Like, it's almost a year. Watch the season go by. Then the 2021 season happens. We keep going going around so now we're, we're at the 21 season getting ready for the 21 22 season my rookie year with south bay so now we're in this little realm of tryouts so now it's like what's going on like do i need to try out for some teams there were four teams that i tried out for and they all cut me i don't know i'm not gonna name the teams but it was tryouts open tryouts and they all said now nah, we're good this is wow. after the bubble. This is after the bubble. After season, the bubble. Yeah, yeah okay. This is after Summer League 2021. Okay, okay. Summer League, after that Summer League. And then now it's the tryout area. You know that little realm of like, not August, but like October. So yeah, for sure. Like, so this is, I played, this is 16 months since my season, at season Temple. ended at Temple. So I got cut for four teams. And um, now I'm just like, dang, what's going to happen? 
again, I can't say how two years. I, I'm dubbing um, overseas options. I'm dubbing. I'm like, Yo, I, want, I need to be in the G League because I believe that my game and my set, how I play, could translate to the G. To self-belief and a lot of, a lot of prayers, bro. A lot of prayers, bro. I mean, a lot. Shout out to Jesus because without him, I would not be here. I get a random call in the last day of the last day of tryout period. So like around like I think October-ish. Mm-hmm. And I, mind you, I didn't try out for this team. I didn't even know this team was even a thing. I just get a call and it's like a phone call, El Segundo, California. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking the spam. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad always told me like, during this time, answer everything. Uh-huh. So you never know. So I'm sitting there watching my phone. I'm like, should I answer this phone? And I'm like, all right. Hello? Hey, Nate, is this is Brian Walsh from South Bay Lakers, assistant coach. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Mind you, I was going through the gutter for 16 months, so my mind. Little Brian. <laughs> Don't call him. No, 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 I'm just saying that. <laughs> I don't mean cut, that. that no, I don't mean that in a bad way. B walls, I love you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Don't. I'm saying enough for you, B walls. <laughs> We're both little. You can't be saying. Y'all that. like true. the same height. Not nah, true. Nah, I'm a little taller. I feel like y'all but. crazy. Keep going, don't come to my man B walls like that, man. <laughs> nah, I love him to death. Cause without without, I don't know how where I would be right. Without, yeah. Cause like B walls is one is the main guy that you know he was helping me. Him, Coach him, Miles Simon. You know they those guys right there gave me a chance. They those guys gave me a chance. You know, I would not have gotten an NBA jersey. I would not be able to have preseason opportunity with one of the best, with the best player ever, my personal opinion. And, you know, be here. Because South Bay gave me a chance. I'm forever grateful for that opportunity. Nick Mazzella, that GM, you know, gave me an opportunity. And um, that's how I got here. Interesting. I tried out for four. I was in open tryouts for four G League teams. And you said the Lakers weren't a team that you tried I out for either. Even, I didn't even... Your rookie year, that South Bay team was so fun to watch. Absolutely stacked. I mean, Mac McClung, Jay Huff. You had Darren Collison for a little bit. He played Mason like two games. Jones. Mason Jones was there. Um, Frank Mason. Frank Mason, absolutely. Paris Bass. Paris Bass. Dude, Paris Bass was unbelievable. I mean, you guys had an absolute mob that year. So talk about that. Tremont because, Waters. Dude. Oh and my. when Tremont got... Pierre Jackson. He ended up getting... Well, Pierre was there for just a little bit, I'm right? just saying, that team was just like Stacks. constantly yeah. crazy. It like. was constantly... <laughs> and then Frank Mason, that was in 2021. In 2020, he Frank Mason was the G. MVP. MVP. Yes. You know what I mean? And yes. so that... I just remember that team. Mac was a rookie at the time. Jay Huff was a rookie at the time. I was a rookie. You were, the, you were a rookie as well. Yeah. And then that rookie year, you also had Andre Ingram on that AI, team. AI, man. Talk about... Being with the goat, legend, that dude right there, man. I'm. I learned so much from Andre Ingram, man. Like, so much. How do? How do I say this? How I am as a teammate now. What you guys seen like the last two years, like Jason Collier, Sportsmanship Award. Mm-hmm. How I am now, it's because of him. Andre Ingram was the ultimate pro. Ultimate taught me how to be resilient. His story. Given it five days because your life could change in five days. So if it's not worth the hassle and the mental capacity in your mind to even have any type of negative negativity in your mind, give it five days because this could change. The roster I watch rosters change in five days. <laughs> I watch people get call ups in five days. This is so many things I've seen in just from that uh, piece of advice. But Andre Ingram is one of my mentors. You know what I mean? He helped. Uh, he took me to my very first um, players union meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just tagging along. He's a neat. Come on, man. Like, come <laughs> hang out with me, man. Like that. <laughs> so I was just like, man, Andre, his family, great dad. You know, um, I have nothing bad to say about that man. Man, it's a legend in my eyes. And he's arguably, well, to me, it's not arguable, the greatest G League player of all time. Not because he was necessarily a superstar, but because of what he's meant to the league. Andre Ingram is the most important figure in the G League. Yes. I don't care what anybody says because when you think about the G League and gutting it out and grinding to get to your opportunity. He's the only one. He's the only one that did that. Because a lot of people said, ah, you know, I got kids. He had kids. Yeah. Ah, the money for my kids and my family. Yeah, you know, he probably, he had he had offers to go overseas, I bet. But he said, nah, I'm going to gut it out. 
I'm gonna stay with South Bay. Mm-hmm. The people that believed in me, closest to the NBA, because you're literally in in South Bay. You're in the facility, bro. Like it, it's the Lakers court and our court. We're literally here. You see those championship banners. You see the championship trophies. You see the O'Briens every single day. And bro, when you think about Andre Ingram, you think about you know gutting out for what nine, ten years. His tenth year tenth is when he year, got, got called, called up. up yeah. And you got people out here giving up. I'm not saying giving up. I'm not gonna say give up because people have different circumstances and dreams. But not suffering for a little bit in the G League, having not playing a little bit, having a bad season, and saying, I'm gonna just go overseas. Now, Andre Ingram taught me that I right, man, it's patience, it's a long game. Mm-hmm. And in ten like, he you think that his his third year, he thought his tenth year in the G League, he was gonna get a call up, <laughs> and he's getting eighteen points and making mad threes in Staples Center, and people are saying Andre, Andre going crazy. I don't think he he did. I don't think no one can. Yeah. But no, no Andre, he did. No Andre did. He probably did believe that. But nah, man, Dre, Andre Ingram is the most. He's the, what, the best shooter of all time in the G League. He has the most threes ever. Most, most threes ever. Like he didn't have to do those things for me my rookie year, and it, it was only one year couple months and he had that much impact on me one thing about andre's story that some people know some people don't is that while he's playing in the g league he's working as a tutor yeah tutor. like a math and science tutor he's to earn so extra smart. money he's, yeah he's so smart man that's insane man yeah. so shout out to him because i've met andre a couple times and to tell you the truth you know i know andre's time in the nba was short he had those uh that one stint in 2018 yeah, two, and two, yeah, 19 two, he got called up yeah yep. yep. but being around andre a few times Number one, the nicest dude in the world. The nicest dude, always smiling, everything like that. But number two, you know, I've been around some like big NBA players. You know what I mean? Working in the G League, being at All-Star Weekend, everything like that. You know, I've seen them NBA players. Because Andre's the GOAT of the G League, I felt like a little nervousness like being around him just because I was like, wow, he means so much to our league. And being a G League fanatic, you know what I mean? It's like he's kind of like my Michael Jordan in a way, you know? Yeah, uh, it's crazy. It was crazy you say that because... Um, he's the first one of the first persons I text one of the first people I texted when I got to South Bay because you know we go in a little group chat you know I'm a rookie and I didn't make the team yet because you still got to make the team I mean, that's crazy I had to go do all that and start to make the team because people don't, don't oh because it was training it camp it was training camp right so right. I had to make the team to get to South Bay and I texted him a long good message it's like uh, my name is Nate Pierre nice to meet you and I'm thinking that like no this is Andre I don't have I don't know Andre Ingo from a can of paint I just said told me to text him nicest text message ever. Thank you, man. Like, I appreciate you. Da-da-da-da. Like, can't wait to meet you. Da-da-da. Like, bro, love. Like, Andre is a legend in my eyes. Well, that year, he was also on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> made money, too. And made money. Oh, I didn't, he, he was on, I did not he know He was that. on Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> wow. yeah. And he won, and he, he made won. basically <laughs> his G League <laughs> salary for the whole year. I remember that. That's yep, crazy. Yep, yep, bro, yep, yep. Bro, one of my friends texted me. I don't watch Wheel of Fortune. No, you know me, me neither. I don't me watch it. One of my friends texted me and said, yo, Andre Ingram's on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I didn't even look into it. I thought he was playing around he right? won that joint too bro and then I see it on Twitter that night that Andre was on there and he won and had him with Pat Sajak it was so funny man Andre has, Andre's life is just amazing man. yeah a yeah. tutor yeah. really helped him out nah, he's a goat man it's crazy he's Legendary. a goat do it all Nate you had talked about it before we went on camera but you played that year with Mac McClung <laughs> stepbrother yeah and he went to your wedding no, he wasn't. He didn't went to my wedding. He was in my wedding. He was in your wedding. Okay, yeah. talk about your relationship with him and what you saw out of him his rookie year. Mac McClung, we call each other stepbrothers. Like I'm Brennan and he's Dale, depending <laughs> on the day. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, <laughs> it's my best friend, like one of my best friends. So no, I get I could get emotional talking about Mac because it's like I really think that he's amazing. I think that he's an NBA player. I really believe that everything that he wants, he's going to get in due time. Um, you know, I really believe that you know he's an NBA player and he could stick in the NBA. And he will stick in the NBA. My rookie year, I seen flashes of greatness. Mm-hmm. What everybody sees now. Um, so maybe a little raw version because he was still a rookie. Um, but Mac is Mac. You know, he's he's amazing, great scorer. His playmaking ability is so underrated. So when people say he's not a point guard, I, I literally defend him all the time. Like, bro, he could pass the ball very well. We saw it tonight. Yeah, 16 assists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that Max, one of the best players, you know, that's not in the NBA right now. 
you know, I think he is one of the best point guards, or not if best guards in the NBA, in the G League. Um, you know, I got I got Mac just, you know, he could dominate whenever he wants. Like he's one of those guys that's good at anything. Mm-hmm. You know, he could pick up anything he's good at. He could he could become an he could become an actor. He could become a, a <laughs> singer. You know, like Mac is just one of those guys that could do anything good. And uh, you know, I'm just grateful to have, I'm grateful for him to be my one of my best friends. And um, you know, I can't wait to see him in the dunk contest again. That's crazy. Defend the chip. Defend his chip. <laughs> what was it like watching him win the dunk contest and become? I knew he was going to win oh, though. Yeah. I seen some wicked stuff in person. You know, I'm telling everybody, I better watch this because my brother about to win this. And when he won it and made history, it's just like dog. <laughs> I, no one could tell me anything about my brother. Like. The dude's amazing, mm-hmm. and uh, it's funny because on my wedding, a crazy, cra- a crazy gift he gave me was uh, <laughs> a stepbrother's T-shirt, and I was Dale. He was Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so your faces were replaced? Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like that's my brother, man. I love Matt. All right, guys, we need our ad revenue, so we're gonna throw it to a short commercial break, and we'll be right back after this. Nate, moving on, that year, your rookie season in South Bay, yep. you had a good year on both ends of the ball. You know, you're averaging like nine points a game on a stacked team, by the way. Yeah. You know, you're locking up 94 feet. Yep. Um, you play with the Lakers in Summer League. Yep. Then you earn the Exhibit 10 with the Lakers, yeah. the Los Angeles Lakers. Great. That Lakers team that season, of course, they have LeBron, mm-hmm. they have AD, they have Russell awesome. Westbrook. You get to spend training camp with them. Yeah. Talk about that experience. So, my training camp situation was a little different because you know i had to wait it out yeah um i had a train i had a, a solid summer league you know to do my role and um shout out to lonnie walker that's another good friend of mine um he let me stay at his house mm. and because they i was just out there working out with you know b walsh and dane johnson just working out waiting for the exhibit because you know i was i knew i was gonna get it i just didn't know when so i was staying at lonnie walker's house with my wife and we're just worried. I'm just working out, going to the gym, coming back to Buddha's house, coming back, going back to Buddha's house. And I finally got that call. And it was the last two games of the season, last two games of preseason. So I got an opportunity to be with the Lakers for about like six days. And when I tell you, it was probably one of the best six days ever. Like when it says, when Andre Agnew says give it five days, that five days was lit. <laughs> no, I will remember those five, six days forever. You know, it was cool because uh, my very first NBA opportunity um, I didn't play, you know, but you're still on the bench, so you still feel a part of the situation, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. get to suit up, get to, you know, uh, work out, you know, get your little pregame shooting times, you know, it's cool because <laughs> I walk in and the first person I see is Braun. What was that like? I mean, I've seen Braun before all the time, but it's just like, it's different when he's like your teammate. Yeah. Like, you like, you like, not. Now like, you're playing with playing him. Playing with him. So I'm like, yo, but it's like, I watch him, Braun, and he's just taking care of his body, you know, locked in. And um, I got a picture. I was sending it to my guys. I'm like, like I, I was number 94, by the way, because you know, 94 feet, guarding 94. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, number 94, and I had my 94 jersey, and the person behind me, I didn't even peep. It was Bron. So I was like, but who is that behind you? Is that Bron? And I didn't even notice. But yeah, it was just a great, great, great experience. You know, I had great practices. You know, I had a lot of great moments, and I will remember it forever. And I can't wait to actually get a call up and be in a real situation and real regular season situation because the NBA is nothing better, you know, especially with that. I had an opportunity to actually be in a um, in a film room with the legends, with all those legends. And wow, wow. It was just, like, so beautiful, like, basketball, like, people's IQs just bouncing off back and forth, back and forth. It's just beautiful, man. It just makes you just so grateful to, like, you know, from your journey, from that the 18-month delay, um, from the random call for B. Walsh, from trying out from those four teams getting rejected, you appreciate it more. And I, and I remember, like, just looking at Patrick Beverly. Because it's cool, because, like, you know, you just, the people that you're watching film with, watching film on, you're playing with now. So I'm asking PB, like, you know, how did I do? He said, you did great, you did great, you know? So it's just, like, I'm really grateful to have that opportunity to, you know, see LeBron, play with LeBron. The same year he dropped, uh, he beat the record. So it's just like, it's cool. 
And I'm ch- I would cherish those moments forever. What goes through your mind? Are you like, oh my God, I just scored an NBA bucket? Bro, I was trying to be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I know it's a preseason bucket, you know, but I'm just talking to the guys that, you know, it's not, it's so hard, bro, to get to the NBA. Right. It's so hard. You know, you got guys out in the G League dropping 40, still not in the NBA. And you just don't understand how to get there. And just to be on any NBA court, this is appreciation, the gratitude that you have. Um, it's just a beautiful moment. You know, you just cherish those moments, the locker room, the camaraderie, just sitting on the bench next to those guys. He's like, then you're watching the TV and like, then you're there. Growing up, like my dad played with the Celtics for training camp. Okay. And he was like one of the last men cut, like same similar situation to me. It's like, I was the last day, last day of cuts, I was cut. I always he had, he had that's why I wear 15 right now because it's like growing up I always wore 15 because it was a reverse number of my dad my dad was number 51 in the NBA mm. so it made me appreciate his journey because it's like it's so hard you know just to get there you know um, it's cool because I have a Celtic he has a Celtic jersey I have a Lakers jersey oh. so it's just legendary <laughs> so in our household we're winning because he's like we got the two the two highest of basketball championships winning, the like most winningest championships in NBA history, two of those jerseys are in our household, which is pretty cool. You know, NBA preseason or NBA regular season, you know, you did that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's a sense of gratitude, but not content. Do you understand? Like, I, I'm not content with where I want to be because I do want to get to the NBA, but I'm so grateful of what the Lakers did, because the Lakers didn't have to do that. They didn't really have to, and they, they they showed a tryout player who got rejected by four teams, uh, NBA Dream. How much does the thought of getting a call up, being in the NBA, consume you? Wow. Dang, Jeff. <laughs> That's a real one. That's a real question. <laughs> I won't say it consumes me anymore. I don't anymore. And I learned that this year. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're going through adversity, you have a lot of time to think. And I don't think it consumes me anymore because I know who I play for. I know who I am. I'm confident in who I am. And I'm super confident, not because of myself and my work ethic. I'm confident because of him. Mm-hmm. I think it's a different type of confidence because a lot of people's confidence comes from, you know, worldly things. Mine doesn't. So that's why I feel as a lot of times when bad things happen to me and I'm smiling, people are looking at me like I'm a little off, I'm a little crazy because I'm really a joyous human being. It doesn't consume me. Um, do I want it? <laughs> yeah. Do I Do I need it? No. Okay. Okay. I don't need it. I want it. Um. I think everyone in the world wants to be in the NBA. If you're in the G League, you want to be in the NBA. But I think once you let go and understand you don't need to get to the NBA, mm-hmm. it's a difference. Because when you, it, it's, a, it's a different feeling. Because now you get to lock in with a free mindset. Because when you need something, if you everybody here needs water, right? But if sometimes, if you, if, if you sometimes think about it as like basketball as water and you can't live without it, it's really unenjoyable. And I feel like you have to enjoy this pr- process. You have to enjoy this marathon that you want. Because if not, every bump in the road, you're going to feel like it's the end of the world. Mm-hmm. Do you get where I'm coming from? Absolutely. So, like, I feel as me saying that, you asking me how much it consumes me, it, 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 it doesn't consume me as I thought it would. Um, but I would say that I definitely just let go and let God. And let God take care of the rest. Because at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is situational. Yeah. A lot of stuff is a lot of luck and timing. Sometimes it's not your time yet. And you have to really let go and understand that and be okay with not hating on the next man with their opportunity. Because sometimes it's like, this guy's been praying for this opportunity for four years and he finally got it. Yeah. God bless him. All right. Now it's like keep going i love hearing that nate because i definitely get caught up in that myself where you know ak and i live together and every day i tell ak literally every day i want to be someone in the g league i want to be someone in the g league i want to make a name for myself you know what i mean i just think that like i just watched you and watching your journey outside looking and i'm like dang i'm proud of jeff like, i appreciate like, that i'm like 
you probably don't get that a lot on your show, but I'm grateful that you even here and I'm grateful that you took the time to come here and I'm grateful that you took a bet and said the thing on Instagram saying that Nate's the best of friends in the world. Like yeah, no other person yeah. would say that. And yeah. it's just like, I'm grateful that you, you know, believe in me and I believe in you. And it's just like, I think that sometimes we could be our hardest critics. And I'm just keep going back to my Lord and Savior is because mm-hmm. he forgives. It's no need for, we already won. You won the battle already when you got him. And sometimes you could be just be so like, ah, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do that. And it's like, bro, you you already won. Mm-hmm. Like, I think you're winning. I think you're already making your name win for yourself. I appreciate that. Like, appreciate when people that. look at you, like, people like your GLE TV. Yeah, you know, yeah. Or, I was going to say, whenever GLE gets mentioned, Jeff's name Jeff's is name. Jeff's name, you're you know? a part of the culture now. Uh, that means a lot. And I just think lot. that, like, you don't probably get your flowers. <laughs> a lot <laughs> but I'm gonna give you your flowers and I think that like you know you talking about I need to make a name for myself I need to make a name for myself I need to do this I need to do that you're doing it that means a lot Nate I and it may that. not feel as like it's not on your time and it usually isn't but God's time is always the best time so like right now you're moving in the right trajectory at your pace mm-hmm. you're doing what you can mm-hmm. control basically yeah and that's what life's all about yep. controlling what you can control that's why I just play defense and just Get over screens. That means a lot, bro. My dog. No, that That's means a lot. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yep. All right, guys. We're gonna throw it to a short commercial break, and we'll be right back to certified G's after this. So, so now, Nate, you're playing in Mexico City. To begin the year, I'm gonna be honest with you. That roster that you guys had was insane, you Rockstar, know? like, honestly. I NBA mean, team basically. I had never seen Crazy. a G League roster like that. Kenneth Freed, who's, Kenneth Freed, who's still on the team. Yep. Trey Burke. Yeah. Michael Carter-Williams. Yep. JTA, Juan Toscano-Anderson. Ethan Thompson. Ethan Thompson, who's been playing out of his mind. And to tell you the truth, Ethan last year was on the Windy City Bulls. And I was like, oh, Ethan's a really good player. I was like, oh, he's going to be a good role player for you Ethan guys. Ethan Thompson. And I tell Ethan Thompson he's the best scorer I've ever seen. Every single day, you're the best scorer alive. Jay, you're the best scorer alive, Fob. You're the best scorer alive. That's the type of team I am. Like, bro, he's like that. Everything about him is like that. And he's the most humble human being you could ever meet. Talk about what makes him such a great scorer. Five? Man, five. He's the type of dude that you look up and be like, dang, he got 30? And he does it such in the flow of the game. Does it so smooth, so quietly. And I think that translates him to the NBA player. Because I feel as if I'm a GM, I'm looking at guys that could just slide in, who could hit the three, calm, good person, um, could, could guard. Because you seen yesterday, he yesterday. had six steals. Yeah. I've been yeah. on him. I'm like, bro, if that's the only knock. If you could consistently play defense, dog, dog you're a leaguer. Um, but yeah, that dude right there is the best scorer. I've seen a couple of best. Uh, he's top two or t- one A and one B. I've seen Mason Jones too, so it's one A and one B depending on the day. So pure score in the G League, Ethan Thompson. Ethan Thompson is the best scorer. I'm not gonna say because his score is always people think about points like points per game. Right. I'm gonna say the most effortless, most angelic score in the G League is probably Ethan Thompson. Someone okay. who doesn't need the ball in their hands but could still get you that bucket it's just like water to him he's the type of dude that could yawn 22 <laughs> <laughs> yawn 24 like last game against the spurs he had 13 you look up right he's like he got 13 all right it's gonna be like a calm night for five uh-huh. right and the game 24 <laughs> like dog how <laughs> how bro but it's just like i tell him all the time like five you the one of the best scores i've ever seen in my life so keep doing what you're doing i love your game Respect. And then mm-hmm. another crazy part about the Capitanis, uh, when I'm watching their games, majority of their games, the fans are just always showing love. Yes. Like sometimes they're selling the crowd. Yes. Like talk about the fans in Mexico City. Mexico City Capitanis is an NBA team at home. It's it's like the Lakers, bro. Like we have celebrities in the Latin community that has come to Mexico City Capitanis games. Like the weekend games are like commerce or so like six thousand, seven thousand, but Midweek, eight o'clock, prime time, it's like thirteen thousand, twelve thousand, wow. you know, thirteen, fourteen thousand, and it's like loud. You feel it. It's just the fans love is beautiful. It's just like 
they love you out there and it's like they appreciate you you know i'm signing autographs if you play 30 minutes you play no minutes you sign their autographs they love you they want to take pictures of uh, pictures with you and it's just amazing it's amazing to be in that environment and for those watching even six thousand for a G League game, game is, is crazy. crazy. Like on an average night, it's probably like seven to eight thousand. Yeah, and it's like that's not no more than G League. I'm used to South Bay when the capacity is like three hundred people. Yeah, I mean we've been to some G League games where hey, it's like fifteen one fifty. One fifty is a you good can day. You hear a dime drop. Yeah, in some of these G League <laughs> yeah. games. It's like a practice scrimmage sometimes. <laughs> to OKC in the middle of an eleven a.m. game, no one's there. Oh. No just one. your family. Yeah, just yeah, your family. Just your family. If, if that. If that. <laughs> yeah. if that sometimes. That's a G League for you, though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, Nate, moving on. I feel like we were actually one of the first people to know that you got elected as vice president of the Players Union. Oh, yeah. You because guys I think there. we were. We yeah, were we there. Were well, there. We, had saw, we had seen you. at It was at G League Showcase. Yeah. And we were walking back from the arena. You, Devin, and your wife were sitting yeah. down at the eatery area. And we yeah. were, you know, talking and everything. You yeah. guys had just gotten out of that meeting. Literally 30 minutes before. 30 minutes before. And then Devin goes, should we say it? And then I was like, "What is it? What is it?" And you're you like, know, "You know, I'm this loke. I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna let y'all find out on y'all on your own." Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that idea to run come to be? All right, this is actually a crazy story because um, shout out to JTA. JTA was supposed to be like the main guy. You know, I'm just like I always sometimes just like I like to watch and like I'm like I'm really an observer. <laughs> and um, JTA was supposed to be like the main team rep, and I was just gonna come in as the second guy. JTA a week like three four days before the showcase, he gets with the Sacramento Kings for uh, for a one year deal. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm the team rep now. So I'm getting the emails. All uh, right, Devin told me he was gonna be trying to go for the vice president spot. I'm like, all right, cool, bro. You know, you got my vote, right? We go there. I'm just sitting there, just like watch. I'm like, dang, I could really be a vice president. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking, like, dang, I wonder what would happen if I just raised my hand. Because I'm thinking, like, is this one person? Like, it's supposed to, I don't. I didn't know it was gonna be two vice president spots. If it was one vice president spot, I was just gonna vote for DC. Yeah. Right. right. Like, that's just how the guy I am. I want to see my guys win. So as soon as I seen two, I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know cause I'm like I would love to just be a part of like what's going on in the G League I want to hear the conversations I want to see the growth of the G League um, I think I could talk from a different light of not being in the G League and understanding how grateful it is to be in the G League um, you know I have a jersey you know I feel like I could just give a different light and Devin too Devin won G League MVP of the finals you know he's been in the NBA, had an injury, came back to the NBA, which is a yep. crazy story, by the way. And uh, I just think that the both of us, you know, we work great together because that's one of my closest friends, you know, um, that's really family. And I think that, you know, both of us together could really help Jeff and have a different light because, you know, I'm in Mexico City right now, so I can see the negatives and the positives of Mexico City and what we do and don't have. And then the same thing with Dev with Birmingham and, I think that we could really, you know, make things shake. And was so was it just you and Devin running for the VP spot? No, or was, was there no nah, bro? I really thought uh what's the boy? Abdul uh from the Thunder. Oh Abdul Gaddy. I thought Abdul Gaddy was gonna win. Cause his speech was impeccable. Oh wow. Oh, so you guys had to write speech? No, no, not write a speech. Mm-hmm. I had to, it was like from the from the heart. Oh uh, wow. Okay. And I'm thinking Abdul Gaddy got like, you know, years on me. You know, he's been in the G League for some time now. Him and Devin, you know, I think they could win. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm telling Devin, I'm like, yo, bro, I don't think I won because I do got his speech was amazing. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> Devin could speak very well. You know, he got That's that. That's his thing. He could pull that Princeton hat out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very like, true. dog, I went to Temple, bro. So it's just, <laughs> <laughs> no shout out to Temple, but I'm just saying that, like, I'm not, it's not Princeton, you know? So it's just like, no shade on myself. I'm just thinking that, like, yeah, I do got it, got it. And then, Next thing you know, I just hear my name. And I'm like, dog, what? We're <laughs> vice presidents of the Players Union? That's crazy. And I didn't understand how big a deal it was until Devin sat down and we were walking back. He's like, bro, do you understand how big this is? 
Real quick, I do want to apologize to Devin because I've been saying I'm going to buy your book and I am going to, but I have not bought it yet. And I know that you, he's been posting the link every single day. So I, I like, wouldn't even know he's posting the link. Oh, true. Send me the link. True, dude. true. But Devin, I am going to buy your book and I've been meaning to. I see it on your story every day and I like your stories. I just haven't clicked the like the uh, buy it now button, man, but I will. That man, Devin Candy, was a, is a Princeton, a Princeton graduate. He played in the NBA. Mm-hmm. G League Finals MVP. G League Finals MVP. Father, husband, uh-huh. author. And that was my last point. He's uh, an author. An author. And a- VP and fellow VP. And the VP. Yeah. Bro, he That's has, insane. Dog, his resume is insane. That's like, insane. Shout out to DC, man. He's like 27. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's like, a whole 50-year-old's resume come, right You're there, an you know? author? Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's something on. you do after you retire. Yeah, yeah. Dog, he's just doing it, man. Shout out to my brother, man. I'm proud of him. Yeah. And actually, um, the link that he sends out is a Barnes & Noble's link. Oh, uh, wow. You know what I mean? It's in stores. It's he's, in stores, yeah. He has yeah. a kid book. Like... If I had, I'm having a son, mm-hmm. so if I was having a, I'm still gonna buy the book. But whenever I have a daughter, I'm reading that book to my daughter for sure. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. That's crazy. So you know, one of the things, Nate, with being the VP now of the Players Union, is that players all around the league for years have been advocating for higher salaries. Is that something you guys are mainly focused on? Uh, I mean, it's part. It's part of it. Yeah. You know, all of us are talking about. We all want to see G League players get paid. You know, we would love to see. Um, a lot of people stay in the States, you mm-hmm. know, like who wouldn't want to stay in the States and trace their NBA dream. Um, but, you know, salary is definitely one of the main things people are talking about in G League because, you know, we would love to see what players are worth. You know, like I feel as people want to have their like, careers. Like we were talking about Andre Ingram, you know, like imagine if a person has a 10 year NBA G League career and it's not shamed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Absolutely. A, like I feel like as people go overseas and they play in a league or two or like a, a B league, you know, in like an ACB or like a, or a, a second tier league in the, in the, and they play for there for like four or five years and they're not getting shamed. It's like this guy's just going overseas. Yeah. But if this guy was in the G League for seven, eight years, like, dog, what are you doing? Just go overseas. Yes. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yes. So it's just like yes. I, w- I think that what we're trying to really focus on is kind of changed the light of the G, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that this Players Union and, and, and us being a part of the first ever Players Union, we could change the vibe and change the energy of the G because, you know, I would love to stay in the G League. I would love to stay in the G League and try to compete in every single year. This is just a league that I could just play in with a good salary, support my family, and maybe one day I get a call up. So... I think that that's what we're trying to really focus on, changing the vibe and changing the energy of like the stereotypical you know, G League career. Nate, I think that's, number one, a fantastic point because people think that you go overseas and you're automatically making six figures. And it does not work that way. It doesn't, bro. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I can tell you right now with the offers I was getting um, when I was in my when I was waiting and I want to call it the Mount Laurel stage. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was like, like I basically could have just worked at McDonald's game. Yeah, I really could have just yeah, yeah. said I'm gonna go work in Barnes and Nobles. You know what I'm saying? But right. It's just like people do it because they want to say they're a pro. Yeah. Um, but I think that the G League itself can possibly change basketball because 99 percent, like it seems like yeah, I may I'm horrible with like no percentages, but like it seems like everybody's in the G League, especially time. now. Now. Yeah. yeah. Like G League is part of the culture. We are a part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just focus on the culture of the game? Everybody touches the G. First round draft picks touch the G. Yeah. 18 Record number so this far. Year, yeah. 18 have already First been in the rounders, G. First rounders, though. Yeah. That's not counting second rounders. Right. First rounders. So it's like everybody and their mother going to touch the G. Mm-hmm. Let's start treating it like it's a part of the NBA. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I think now, I just think we're, we're going to keep focusing on gradually putting our next foot forward and try to make the G League a cool respectable respectable yeah, part of yeah. the culture yeah. and you're right because it's definitely getting there where like you said back in the day people looked at the G League even when it was, especially when it was the D League yeah. and that was where careers went to die yeah. you know like what I mean? mean like you know if you were if you were an older player let's say like when Nate Robinson when Emeka Okafor those guys came yeah. to the G League yeah. Antoine Walker 
Bro, they looked at them as like, Yo, oh, these guys are washed up. Your career's done. Yeah, your career's off, done. Like, what you mean you're trying to use the G League to get back into the NBA? Now it's so common. We have so many veterans over the last three years. Bro, my team had three. Had three or oh, four. 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 Yeah, yeah, four. four. I had JTA. I had Trey Burke, Michael Carter Williams, and I still have K. Ken Free. What you've seen yesterday, he has so much in the tank. Yeah. He could st- 20 and 20, 20 almost. 20 it's 20 ridiculous. Almost. He had 18 points, 21 rebounds. Yeah. Dog's still an NBA player at mm-hmm. almost 35 years old. I have one more question, then AK, I'll let you finish. Is sure. You know, Nate, this is your third year in the G League. Yeah. So many guys, and we talked about Andre for sure, but so many guys like Christian Wood, Gary Payton the second, who you have a lot of similarities to. Thanks, you know, GP2 spent five years in the G League. Yeah. You know what I mean? With five different teams before yep. he got his call. Do guys like that kind of... Motivate. Yeah. Inspire you? <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty good question because, like, I feel as I think that really does help a lot because it's like, all right, this guy could do it. Like, this guy didn't give up. Like, Gary Payton the second is actually one of my biggest inspirations because if he ever sees this and I ever meet him, I'll tell him because, you know, I'm, I love giving people flowers. You know, Gary Payton the second grinded it out, man. Like, I remember when he signed his deal and he said, I could finally unpack my suitcase. Mm-hmm. Bro, I literally almost like I got emotional because it's like, dog, I really can't wait for that because it's like you can finally breathe. Everybody in the G League who's on a G League deal understands what I'm talking about. Yeah, like you can finally <sighs> stability, <laughs> two three years. You know what I'm saying? And um, nah, seeing GP two win a ring, shoot, another inspiration. Juan Toscano Anderson got his chance at 27. You know what I'm saying? And it's very important to understand that it's a long game. He always told me that when he was on my team, like, yo, dog, you are an NBA player. And I feel like JTA and JTA and watching Gary Payton Jr. win that championship really gave me a sense of motivation. I have that on my Pinterest board, them two holding and hugging. Wow. This is like those two were G League players. One was on Santa Cruz Warriors. GP2 played for the Rockets, South Bay, Raptors. Milwaukee, uh-huh. Toronto, Capital Raptors, City, yeah, yep. Capital City. I know all his teams. Uh-huh. I'm not a stalker. I just watch <laughs> a lot Stunning. of his film, you know. And this is when people say I have a lot of similarities to his game. I think I do. And then to wrap it up, I just had one last question. I want to talk about your. I guess it's your motto. Says who? Like, oh, I could go <laughs> years talking about that. Like, how did that all start, and what does it mean to you now? <sighs> Says who is really like a model I live by. Like, I have Bible verses and I have that. Because no one could tell me anything. Like, says who? You can't do that. Says who? You can't make it to the NBA. Says who? Like, you can't shoot. Says who? You could guard me. Says who? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, certain mm-hmm. things is like, certain, it's like an answer for everything. Every type of negativity. Um... I think it's very important to have that in your in my life because it's a lot of negativity surrounding me. And I think a lot of situations that try to get into my inner matrix, but I don't let it because I have Bible verses and I have that. You guys see the tattoo, it's on me, it's branded on me. I'm going to live by that forever because no one's going to tell me what I can and can't do mm-hmm. but my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To tell you the truth, like, it would make me so happy to see you in an NBA uniform, even though I already believe that you were in, you were in an NBA uniform when you played for the Lakers. I still think that counts 100. percent But an you know, actual an actual contract, yeah, 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 contract yeah, yeah, and everything yeah, yeah. like that. You for know, sure, a standard so, deal. Yeah, yeah, would, standard deal. That would be crazy. Uh-huh. We would have to go to that first game. Yeah, yeah. We, I'll, fly would, anywhere, I'll, fly I'll fly anywhere. I'll fly anywhere to see that. You gotta bro. make sure you wear a flower T-shirt. Oh yeah, I will. I will. You'll see me in the crowd. You'll see me in the crowd. But Nate, thank you so much, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. <laughs>